So, hey, how's it going? Uh, tonight I am preparing to head up to Springbrook to attempt to get some sort of photo of Comet Neowise. Now, all the lucky buggers that live in the Northern Hemisphere have been having an absolute filled day with the, with the Comet, while those of us in the Southern Hemisphere have been missing out. Now, I think it's probably been about the last maybe four nights that it's been visible um, down here, which very conveniently has coincided with it being um, completely cloudy and very wet, which uh, given we hardly ever get any rain here <laughs> during winter um, is a little unlucky, but, you know, it's just the way the cookie crumbles. Now, it did clear up a little bit last night and I went out just, just near where I live. Um, unfortunately, there's a bit of light pollution. I was able to find the comet, uh, but as I'll, I'll put up the photo that I took, you can see it's just a tiny little pinprick and you can't see any of the tail or uh, other gases and stuff that are around it. So it yeah, wasn't very exciting. Um, now, up at Springbrook it is darker, so less light pollution, so yay, but the uh, moon is starting to get quite bright now, so got to say I'm not feeling particularly hopeful that I'm going to get anything worthwhile, but you got to get out there, otherwise you get nothing. Um, you know, there's a little bit of cloud hanging around, I can see Springbrook from, from uh, our backyard. There's a little bit of cloud that's been hanging around up there all day. So, you know, I might even get a nice sunset if I don't get anything of the comet. But what I thought I'd do is just have a little run through of the stuff that I am taking with me. Because um, other than the lens that's on there, which is my 24 to 70 f4, uh, which I'll take for doing some vlogging, uh, most of the other stuff are things that don't normally get into my camera bag when I go out for landscape. Number one is my 100mm f2.8 macro. Um, being a stop faster than my 24 to 70 and a bit longer, you know, often you want to shoot wide open, get in as much light as you can when you're doing stuff at night. So um, I used that last night. Because you couldn't see any of the tail of the comet, the comet looked teeny tiny even with this lens. So I'm also bringing my 70 to 300. Um, now this is only an f4 to 5.6, so that's um, one to two stops slower than the other lens. So you just have to see whether that will work out or not. Now this is a lens I've been meaning to sell actually because I've got the 70 to 200 f4 which is uh, smaller and lighter and the one that I take around if I'm doing landscapes and, and want a longer lens. But this is a really nice lens. It's hard to part with it even though I hardly ever use it. This here is my Samyang 14mm f2.8. This is the lens I would normally use for doing astrophotography of like the wide angle Milky Way. Not that I've done very much lately. Um, so yeah, good lens for doing that. Not so good for doing ones of the comet because if we even find the comet, the comet will look like a little flea and you won't even know it's there probably with that lens. So this is a, you know, a backup for doing other astrophotography if the comet is not going to work out. And got my little 51.4 as a, why not? It's a fast lens, it doesn't take up much room. That will go in there too. And that's about it. With my tripod, spare batteries, memory cards, all the kit and caboodle. So I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed that the, um, clouds go away, that this moon is not too bright and somehow I can see this comet. Um, I've been trying using various um, uh, apps like Stellarium and um, Photo Pills, Google Maps and Google Earth and whatnot to see if I can find somewhere that's going to be good for taking a photo and uh, honestly until I get up there I don't know if it's going to work. So. 
next time I see you, I'll, we should be on our way up and um, yeah, fingers crossed it all works out. So here we are up at Springbrook. Now, right now we're at the top of Gumalara Falls, which I um, did a vlog a couple of months ago where we did a walk to the bottom of the falls. Um, and this is the top part of it. Um, I'm just going to have a bit of a wander around, get out an app that shows me where the comet's going to be and see if I can line something up. But I'm also going to take some photos um, while the sun's up and of sunset because yeah a bit of cloud but just patchy but yeah it could be could be a nice finish to the day amazing sunset colours at the moment um, uh, even if I don't get to see the the comet this has been pretty awesome and I'm gonna have to get back to it really quickly I've been snapping away but uh, yeah it's oh, it's a bit hard to see on here let me see if I uh, where am I yeah we see that a bit better now This is what it's all about. Um, where I was over the other side before, I did a panorama, um, but I yes, didn't really have time to talk about it. So uh, hopefully that works out. Now, um, most of the cloud has gone away, so fingers crossed we'll get to see the comet, but I don't know, I still think the moon might be a bit bright, but we'll just have to wait and see. Neowise photos were a complete failure. <laughs> um, after the sunset, I, I set up in the direction where um, I was expecting it to be, and I'll I'll pop a, pop up a photo um, that I took while I was waiting for the twilight to fade. And uh, as you can see, there's a little bit of cloud starting there. 
Well, that cloud kind of built up into a big blob that just sat there. Didn't move, just sat there, exactly where the comet was going to be. So we waited around, I think it's about quarter to seven, so an hour and a half, I guess, after sunset, and it just wasn't budging. So we ended up going over to another spot um, on the other side of uh, Springbrook, and uh, while there wasn't as much cloud over there, I just could not find the comet. Couldn't find it, didn't know where it was, couldn't see it in the binoculars, took some photos and couldn't see it. <laughs> Funnily enough, um, the next morning I, uh, I had a look through the photos and on the very first shot where I was trying to get focus right, there on the very edge I find the comet. All it is is a little blue blob. Um, so not very obvious and because of the moonlight obviously it's uh, you just you can't see any of the gases or the tail or any of that so it was going to be a complete wash up thanks to the moon I think if we'd had clear night on maybe Saturday or Sunday we probably could have got something but you know that's just the way it goes and um, I guess on that that's what I wanted to have a talk about was that in landscape photography <laughs> The weather is something you can't control. Now, you can have a look at weather forecasts and choose to go out based on what you think it's going to be, but um, I think you've probably been like me that you find that they're not always that 100% accurate. Um, now, you can, if you want, kind of go out every morning at sunrise and then you're definitely going to get every single good sunrise there is, and that's... Um, basically the only way that you can guarantee that you get the good ones. Um, now, <laughs> i got to say I'm probably a bit too lazy to do that, so i just got to take my chances. Uh, and I, I think, to me, it's really important as a landscape photographer to not get too caught up in um, allowing the weather to dictate your feelings. So I go out there with my number one, the number one thing that's most important to me when I go out and take photos is that I enjoy myself. That I'm out there in nature, appreciating where I am, appreciating the beauty that there is, even if it's not perfect for photography. Um, instead of getting a bit caught up in wishing that things were different because it doesn't matter how much you wish, it's not gonna change. And um, for instance, when Danny and I went to uh, Germany, the German Alps, a couple of years ago, we had day after day after day of no sunrise or sunset colour. Um, up until up until we'd left the Alps and the first good sunset we had, we were driving in our car. Anyway, uh, and yeah, Danny got increasingly frustrated about the weather, where I, whereas I was very like, just ah, well, it's just the way it goes, you know. You, I've been doing landscape photography long enough to know that um, if I was to worry about that, I would just spend my whole holiday um, being annoyed and frustrated and wishing stuff was different. And there's no point to it. There's no point. So my number one thing is to enjoy where I am. And the number two thing is to do the best that I can do with what I've got. Uh, and, you know, sometimes, you know, occasionally, um, when you get back home and you, you edit, you can actually get a bit more out of the photo than what you think you can. Uh, and it can turn out to be a better shot than what you think. And I'll, for instance, I'll, I'll put up a photo now that I took while I was in Germany. Um, now this was after we'd had a really, really windy night. It was very strange. We went to bed and there was no wind. And then we woke up at like three o'clock in the morning and it was like a hurricane. It was so odd. There was stuff flying around everywhere. And when we woke up um, just before sunrise, I could see some big clouds and thought, oh, there might be something. So we headed out and there wasn't a whole lot of sunrise color, but when I got home, I was about to, able to kind of edit it a bit more and get a bit more out of it. So sometimes that happens, but I think, I think it's really important, you know, we're out there enjoying landscape photography because we love the outdoors, we love um, nature. And so 
I think it's really important not to get so caught up in the result that we end up losing that love that we have. I think, you know, being in nature and appreciating where you are and appreciating the beauty that's there regardless of what the conditions are like because they're always, you know, they're different, they're unique. They might not be photogenic, but they're, they're, they're your experience. So, um, you know, that can give us so much. It can fill us up. It can um, help kind of melt away all the other worries in life uh, just to be present and where you are and loving, loving um, nature. And I think that's one of the things photography has given me is that I notice that sort of thing more even when I'm not out photographing, you know, I might leave work and um, my car's parked on a, a top of a rooftop car park and sometimes I'll come out and there'll be this magnificent sunset and I walk out and I, I notice it and I go, wow, and I really appreciate it. And I notice other people just walking around and it's like they don't even see it. And I don't know, I think that possibly could have been me before I took up landscape photography. I think I notice things more. So... Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling now. Um, I think, yeah, I just, I just wanted to make, I guess, the point of be there, enjoy the moment. That's more important than, you know, ending up with the end result. Because if you're enjoying the moment and then the conditions come, that's when you're going to make magic. If you're always just so busy focusing on making, you know, these technically perfect pictures, um, I think you'll probably end up losing the the heart and the soul from the photos eventually. And plus it's not much fun. So, yeah. Get going out there, enjoying nature, whatever it chucks at you. Okay. Hope to catch you next time. Bye. Um, I've got to... I might have to try and turn this around. I've got a, the local magpies. Wait a sec. Ooh, turn it around without him. Oh, gone. Oh, you guys are noisy.